Commuting is a joy, isn't it? Especially in a crowded city. Nothing like sitting in a 400 horsepower car that inches up at 5 km per hour through gridlock to promote mental health and well-being. Or fighting your way onto a standing room only subway and sniffing the armpit of the person beside you for 10 straight stops. And I get it, if you live in a far northern or southern city, you have to deal with winters. But for most of the world, most of the time, there are other options, the best of which involve two wheels, because traveling that way is the perfect combination of speed and narrow profile, which allows commuters to slip through the gaps in traffic. Now, I used to live in a big city and commuted on 1200, 700 and 300 cc motorcycles and several bicycles. As a reviewer, I've also ridden 50cc scooters, 110 and 125cc mini motos, and 48 and 52 volt electric bikes. And let me tell you, all of these vehicles have their advantages and disadvantages as commuting machines. But in this video, I want to focus on inexpensive urban transit. So let's throw out the bigger motorcycles and look at mini motos, 50cc scooters, and electric bicycles. All of these can be purchased for between 2,000 and 4,000 US dollars or whatever the equivalent exchange rate in your country is. And I have to say, that's not too much more than a yearly bus pass, although some will accrue additional expenses. So if you don't want to spend hours in traffic or on the bus and you don't want to ride your Road Glide or R1250GS through rush hour hell, stay tuned for a better alternative. And if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing and all that jazz. What does a vehicle need to be an effective commuter in city traffic? It needs to be small, light, narrow, easy to operate and fast enough to keep up with traffic flow. We're looking at mini motos, 50cc scooters and e-bicycles here and none of these vehicles are capable of doing highway speed. So if your commute requires highway driving, you are better off with a 300cc motorcycle or a larger scooter such as the Honda PCX150. By the way, for my mini moto and scooter shootout video, click in the top right corner. Let's look at mini motos first. Notice I'll mostly mention Hondas here since most mini motos sold in North America are bikes like the Grom, the Navi, the Monkey, the Super Cub and the Trail 125. Kawasaki also has the Z125 Pro, but Honda dominates this segment. These motorcycles, and they are motorcycles requiring motorcycle licenses, have several advantages over the scooters and e-bikes. First, they're the fastest, with the 125cc ones able to hit 90 km per hour or 55 miles per hour on the flat. Even the less expensive 110cc Navi will get close to 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour. That's enough to keep up with traffic on most city streets and you will not be holding people up behind you or having to deal with cars trying to dangerously squeeze by. Additionally, mini motos are the best handling and most fun to ride. Bikes like the Grom and the Monkey have clutches and manual gears and generally ride like motorcycles. You can squeeze the tank with your knees and turn them with weight on the pegs unlike scooters. And even though some mini motos like the Navi and Super Cub are automatic or semi-auto, they still handle better than scooters. You can use these for your commuting, but you can also do some stunting, take them to the track, customize them, and even do a little tour on them if you're not in too much of a hurry. Some, like the Trail 125 and the Monkey, have some off-road capability and several can even go two up if you need to give a friend a lift. There are some disadvantages to mini motos though. They tend to be more expensive than 50cc scooters and e-bikes with the exception of the Navi which costs under 2000 US dollars. However, the Navi is still effectively more expensive than the $2,000 e-bike because you have to register and insure it every year. Another disadvantage for apartment dwellers is that you have to leave the motorcycle outside or in an underground garage. And being a former Toronto resident, I know that these are easy to steal. They weigh between 220 and 240 pounds and can be picked up and put on the back of a truck by two regular sized guys. Plus, all of these bikes require a motorcycle license which isn't cheap or easy to get. And that is something that is not necessarily required by 50cc scooters like the Honda Ruckus or the Metropolitan or Giorno as it's known in Canada. There are jurisdictions around the world that allow riders with a regular car license to operate a 50cc or smaller scooter or moped on public roads, which removes one of the barriers preventing a lot of people from getting into motorcycling. And these have some other serious advantages going for them as well. Number one is fuel efficiency. A Ruckus which holds about 5 liters of fuel will go up to 250 kilometers on a full tank. 
If you're commuting to work on one, you will only have to fuel up once a week with that kind of range. Scooters are also very practical and may contain lockable storage under the seat. The Metropolitan has this and the Ruckus can be outfitted with an underseat box as well. These vehicles are very light, about 200 pounds or 90 kilos, they have automatic CVT transmissions so they're basically twist and go, and they're fast enough having a top speed of about 60 km per hour, the speed limit on many city streets. Finally, some of these, specifically the Ruckus, can be taken off-road and are light enough that if you get them stuck somewhere you can easily pull them out. Disadvantages? Like many motos, they still need to be left outside or in an underground garage, making them rather easy to steal. In my province of Ontario, you still need a full license to ride them, and along with that license, you still have to register and insure them as well. They are inherently less stable and flickable than motorcycles. Standing doesn't feel natural because you're not on foot pegs, and they're simply not as fun or well handling as most mini motos. Finally, 60 km per hour is the top speed on a flat road. When you hit steep hills, that speed can fall to 35, in which case you're holding up traffic, and having impatient drivers trying to squeeze past you on the road can get hairy. At that point, you might as well be riding a bike. And speaking of bikes, the recent rise of the e-bicycle has given city commuters another attractive option for getting to work. I recently reviewed the Hemiway Zebra and the Magicycle Cruiser Pro, both of which have huge 20 amp hour batteries, powerful hub motors, and Tektro hydraulic brakes. These things can be unlocked to go 40 km per hour, 42 in the case of the Magicycle, and they do it cheaper than gas vehicles. Batteries can be charged overnight from a wall socket, and e-bikes will chug along on pure throttle or maximum pedal assist for 50 to 60 km, or on lower pedal assist for 100 plus km, enough to cover most daily city commutes. In addition to saving on gasoline, e-bikes also don't require a motorcycle license, registration or insurance, so the cost of ownership is low. They cost around 2000 US dollars and require little maintenance. Clean the chain once in a while and you're all set. They are also the lightest and easiest to ride, weighing around 75 or 80 pounds. Most people have grown up riding bicycles, so the learning curve is the shortest out of all these vehicles. An additional advantage is the fact that they give you the option of getting some exercise. Turn the pedal assist to medium or low and get a workout along with your commute. They are quiet, don't smell like gasoline and can go on bicycle lanes, bike paths and trails, places where you'd get a ticket on a scooter or mini moto. The Himue and Magicycle being fat bikes also have decent off-road capability and Brooke and I took them on a few trails including some rougher ones. Finally, it's a bicycle. You can bring it up the elevator and into your apartment or townhouse where thieves can get it. Depending on where you work, you might be able to bring it into your workplace. I rode a bicycle to work for years which not only kept me fit but also allowed me a peaceful ride home helping me clear my head after a stressful workday. And as a bonus my work allowed me to bring it into the building. So while e-bikes have a lot of pluses as city commuters, they also have some minuses. First, they're the slowest of the options. 40 km per hour or 25 miles per hour is fast for a bicycle. But on city streets there are going to be cars whizzing past you, sometimes in your lane. This can be unnerving if you're not used to riding bicycles in city traffic. Second, e-bikes have the least range. 60 to 100 kilometers for these two long range bikes, less for many other ones with smaller batteries. That's enough for most city commutes, but if you want to go for a 150k ride on the weekend, you can do it on a mini moto or scooter, but these ain't gonna make it that far. And if you ride the battery to zero, the charging time is about 8 hours. Fine if you charge overnight, not good if you want to get going again soon. So no, you don't have to ride your $30,000 bagger to work every day and try to squeeze through city traffic on it. There are better options. However, which one you choose depends on the type of rider you are and the riding you do. The Mini Moto is for the enthusiast who will use the vehicle for more than commuting. You pay more and need a license, but you become a part of a community and can go group riding, racing, even do a bit of touring. This is the most motorcycle-like experience because these are actual motorcycles. The 50cc scooter is more for the practical-minded person who wants something cool but also wants storage and maximum fuel efficiency. You can commute, shop and ride for pleasure as well, just don't be in too much of a hurry. The e-bike is the least expensive and most hassle-free of the bunch. No license, registration, insurance, no oil changes, no looking for parking spots, no need to follow the roads, ride the bike lane or bike path to work and avoid the stresses of traffic altogether while getting some exercise. 
then bring it into your apartment to keep it safe. I don't do the city commute anymore, but if I did, I'd opt for the e-bike and save my motorcycle from the wear and tear of stop and go commuting. But if I was only going to have one of these vehicles and no other motorcycle, it would be a tough choice between the Honda Grom, the most fun on pavement, and the Trail 125, the closest to an adventure motorcycle. What would you choose as your commuter and why? If it's an e-bike, I'll leave the Hemiway and Magicycle links in the description. Feel free to check them out and leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're commuting to work on two wheels, stay safe out there. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel has paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.